good afternoon and thanks again for the invitation in this panel. Uh, as pointed out before, I don't have a specific education in computer science or digital humanities. And so my goal today uh, is to show how uh, even, um, let's say, traditional scholars through Clarin could learn and discover new tools and methodologies for the work and the new projects. In fact, today I would like to present to you the DEA project. Uh, DEA stands for Digital Edition of Archilocus, uh, a project I am collaborating in uh, with the uh, University of Parma and the ELC CNR of Pisa, the Institute for Computational Linguistics of the Italian National Resource Council, uh, which is the founding member of the Italian Clarin Consortium. Uh, to begin, just a few words uh, about Archilocus. Uh, he is an ancient Greek poet who lived in the middle of the 17th century BC, and he was included in the Alexandrian canon of iambic poets with Simonides and Hipponax. Uh, iambic poetry was a genre with a specific um, prosody and contents, uh, often, often used to insult animals or anyway in an informal, uh, usually trivial and parodical sense. And Archilochus was uh, famous and uh, frequently mentioned not only in the Greek literature, but also in the Latin one. Uh, moreover, he is closely uh, related to Homer, for instance, from a linguistic point of view, but of course with uh, a completely uh, opposite value system. And for all these reasons, he is a crucial author for classical literature and culture. And this is why uh, it is uh, so important to preserve, study and share his work, uh, which uh, currently consists in 300 fragments of poems, some of them only recently found and not yet included in the canonical and more used editions. And uh, the aim of uh, the project is exactly to provide a scholarly digital edition of the whole, cor whole corpus of, uh, of Archilocus works uh, for scholars and also for non-specialized users to preserve in a single site all the knowledge we have about him and to make a viable and uh, easy accessible and augmented corpus of ancient Greek fragmentary literature. Uh, the edition will include the digitalization of the corpus of Archilocus fragments with a complete critical apparatus, uh, including all the uh, philological work done on each text, and an up-to-date bibliography, uh, and the morphological and stylistic analysis, uh, stylistic analysis and translation for each fragment. Furthermore, uh, the edition would be integrated with linked open data, uh, to implement the knowledge available and also to make the uh, user experience uh, more rich, uh, richer and more interesting. And uh, these goals, all these goals have as a um, preliminary step um, the digitalization of Archilocus fragments, uh, supplemented with the complete uh, critical apparatus, as I told before. And uh, the critical apparatus is the, um, the critical part of the edition, uh, which records uh, variance among different uh, uh, attestation of a text and also editorial integrations or uh, um, of, uh, of lost parts of the work, of uh, the works and so on. And to do that, the first, uh, uh, the first uh, step we had to do was uh, to choose a markup language uh, for the annotation. Uh, the markup language is um, the formal language used to uh, describe data and make them uh, operable and usable from the machine. And the choice was XML with the TI schema. Uh, and especially uh, some part of the, the schema, some parts of the schema. Um, chosen as a guarantee of uh, data preservation and interoperability. Then we had to set up an encoding model for data and metadata uh, to choose what elements we wanted to uh, code and uh, um, to the, the markup suitable for, uh, suitable for our purposes. Uh, once defined the model, I started working on its implementation through some um, practical applications. So uh, what I'm currently do, uh, doing uh, is coding a pilot set of poetry uh, preserved on papyrus uh, to uh, check the functionality of the model and uh, um, adapt it to any new needs and so. 
the transcription I am providing uh, takes into account the materiality of the document and uh, also the story of, of its transmissions, including gaps, supplements, uh, and doubtful reading, readings. Uh, in fact, as you can see in the image by clicking on the word materiality, the documents I, we are work, working on are severely um, damaged and corrupt. So, uh, for example, this is a papyrus from the 7th century BC, and so, of course, its state is not so good. Um, and here I show you uh, an example of this transcription. Uh, the element line, the L in the angle brackets, uh, just indicates the verse and the position in the poetry, the, the number in the poetry. Then with the element gap, we uh, uh, code the lacune, so the, the missing letters or words, and the possible possible reasons and extent of the loss. And uh, unclear indicates, uh, of course, an unclear readings, uh, doubtful readings. Supply describes uh, supplements, editorial integration, and so on. Instead, the encoding of the critical apparatus uh, includes three different uh, levels of annotations, annotation regarding different typology of witnesses and um, Witnesses means uh, all the documents uh, or uh, quotation which refers to the text or transmit it. And in the TI header, so in the first part of the TI document, uh, the tag list with, list, list of witnesses, include the answered witness uh, um, associated with an XMLED, a unique identifier, and uh, uh, some essential information about the document, the physical document. The tag list bib uh, includes uh, bibliogra bibliography references and uh, it is also associated with an XML ID, so a, an identifier, and uh, lists uh, modern, uh, modern editions, secondary literature, and ancient text, uh, not considered like an uh, uh, ind uh, indirect witness, but um, just used for conjecture. So, this is the reason why they are in the list bib and not in the uh, list of witnesses. And this information is uh, linked with the quotation of these uh, witnesses or bibliographic bibliography references uh, within the body of the, the text, the TI document, where we find lesson of the text um, from the paper edition chosen as, as a base text for the edition, reading proposed in a modern edition, related with the uh, list witnesses, as I told you before. For example, in this case, in this case uh, we see that some, uh, a certain reading was made by Gerber in 1999. And uh, we also find uh, reading from secondary literature and uh, hypotheses of modern editors supported by Jensen text indicated with source, and uh, once again linked to the list bib in the TI header. TI header. Uh, to include all this uh, detailed information uh, in the digital edition is essential to easily compare different hypotheses uh, by different editors. And by doing so, uh, the users will be able to choose the best integration and also to propose integrations uh, themselves. Uh, in fact, as a support, uh, as a, a support uh, for new critical readings and interpretation, it is really useful the digital medium uh, with its possibility of collecting in a single site uh, the authorial corpus with all the philological and critical hypotheses made in the course of the time. And this is uh, an, op an option we can't have with the paper editions, or we have only partially. Uh, to, sum up, to sum up, today uh, we have a first XML ID annotated set of poetry uh, with apparatus and uh, translations. We also have started to integrate some linked open data. And in the next future, we are um, going to work on the linguistic annotation and of the, on the integration of other uh, linked open data by the ELC, CNR, uh, which will uh, work on the implementation of tools and services uh, to enrich not only the edition itself, but also the um, 
the use of Archilocus corpus for other purposes, for example, for teaching and so on. And um, at this stage of the project, the problems, um, the highest problems have been the difficulty of founding and the time consuming, the, the time required by the encoding process. Um, in fact, as you have uh, seen, um, to quote just a few, a few words, we need uh, to uh, manually include a lot of information. And uh, uh, therefore, in this first step of the, of the project, I think uh, I prefer to quote the, the text directly uh, instead of using tools, because I think um, this is a better strategy when you are just in the first phase of a project, because you have to still uh, think about your model while you are coding in some sense. And to conclude, I would like to um, highlight the role of Clarin in the project. In fact, besides the work on tools and services I, I mentioned before, Clarin is providing the repository uh, for our data and it will be um, available along with other existing digi digitized resources on, uh, on um, for Rancid Greek, for Achilles, but also for Rancid Greek in general. And moreover, Clarin provides important uh, opportunities for training and learning, uh, and also interesting mobility grants, uh, which allow students and scholars to meet uh, other researchers. And so I think um, Clarin is a good option to keep in mind for those who want uh, to uh, start with some digital projects and maybe need tools and help and information to do that. So thank you.